Well, good day, viewers. I am Kamal Haynes. Well, welcome to another featured interview brought to you by 284 Media. Today, I will be interviewing professional basketball players Narville Carey, who is a Virgin Islander that has played in several leagues across the globe, and his wife, Robin Carey, who has also done the same. We will be taking a look at the lives of the Careys, or Narville's journey from the BVI to the big foreign basketball leagues, challenges faced along the pursuit of a professional basketball career, words of advice to share with the youth, what the couple has been up to while vacationing here in the territory, and some of their intended plans and goals for the not too distant future. We dive into all the details right after a word from our sponsors. Freeze. Choose your mix. Choose your flavor. Good job there, brother. All right. I'm surprised you're here. I'm surprised you're still alive. Charles, it's been 60 years. I wish it was 60 more. Let it go. No. You know what you did. <laughs> it was just ice cream. But you know what? It was delicious. What? We're like a family get-together without all the family drama. What you gonna do? CG Insurance. Good like that. Well, welcome back, viewers. As I mentioned prior to the break, I have joining me in studio professional basketball players Norval Carey and his wife, Mrs. Robin Carey, who also happens to be a professional model. Well, welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Carey. Thank you. Thank and, you. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much for actually taking time on your vacation to, to join us here at Twitter for Media. For sure. My pleasure. Okay. Well, I want to first start, um, you know, a uh, brief introductory um, to those persons who are viewing, you know, who is, uh, let's start with ladies first. Let me start with ladies first. Start with your wife, uh, Mrs. Carey. Uh, what is, or who is Robin, you know, for those persons who are um, wondering about, you know, yourself, as, especially as a professional basketball uh, women's player, uh, as well as, you know, your history in terms of um, career-wise in modeling as well, too? Yeah, so my name is Robin Carey. Um, I started professionally uh, with basketball early on. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. As far as like, I'm a nurturer. Um, I love to travel. Uh, as far as basketball, I'm retired. Mm -hmm. I played for over 25 years. I played five years professionally. Um, and yeah. Okay. And what about you, um, Narville? Well, I started playing basketball. Narville Carey, I'm locally here, from here. Uh, I started playing basketball around 12 or 13. I was a late bloomer. I was on. Um, running track and field, playing volleyball. And then I had, I was asked if I wanted to come try basketball out. And mm -hmm. I fell in love with it. And I just wanted the opportunity to see where it takes me. And the first chance I got, I went to uh, Atlanta with Morris and Ray and a few other guys. Mm -hmm. And I guess I thought I was good already. But then when I get up, when I got up there and played against the other talent, mm -hmm. I realized that I have a long way to go, and I just got more hungry and like I wanted that opportunity to go else, go abroad and see how far this, see how far basketball can take me. And then I got the opportunity to go to uh, Delaware, where I played. Uh, I went to high school for three years. So I, I left there in fifth form, where I was about to graduate. And I went back and I did three more years. And I got a scholarship to go to Moorhead State University. Mm. And then when I was, we was about to go there, uh, the whole coaching staff changed and went to another university. And they asked if I would like to come along with them. And I said, sure, we, uh, because we went to the visit at Moorhead State University because it was myself along with Dion Edmund, who was with me in the, uh, in the in high school as well. 
and we went to the visit we liked it so we, we liked the coaching staff and everybody and then when they changed school they asked if we wanted to go with them and it was like yeah and one of the coaches that we was there as well he was, his name is Jareem Dowling and he gave us that opportunity to go to the states finish out high school and I told him like wherever I wherever he goes to play uh, coach basketball that's where I'm going to come play for my, my first year mm. and that's how it played out. He got he was at Southern Miss, and then we went there as well. And I played four years there. I redshirted my uh, senior year of college, and then finished. I got my degree in um, sociology, my bachelor's in sociology, and I had one more year left to play. So I transferred to Rider University, where I, uh, I started my master's in um, homeland security, and. I have a few more classes to finish on that, mm -hmm. but that's where I met my wife, Robin, and she was actually studying the uh, same major as I am, as I, and she got her degree in it. And while I said I'm gonna um, start get myself situated with basketball and then go back to finish my degree as well. Mm -hmm. And after uh, playing at Ryder, I went to uh, Holland, mm -hmm. where I started my professional career. Mm -hmm. which was another step, a higher step in basketball in terms of you playing good at a college and thinking you're really good and then you're in the professional field where everybody is good so you always have to be on the A game, putting in that extra work, doing the necessary things, taking care of your body to make sure that you're on point as much. It's not always going to be like that, but the more you try to be, make it that way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an easier time for you as well. Mm -hmm. So before, before we you go past the journey of, of Holland, you would have started your professional career in Holland. Um, I want to go back to something you touched on. You said basically you were a late bloomer when it comes to basketball. So meaning more than likely you would have started uh, any serious basketball uh, playing outside of the BBI. And in terms of uh, from that, you know, were there any uh, indications here, you know, any persons here trying to encourage you to play basketball while you were here prior to leaving? Well, when I, when I got introduced to playing the sport and I decided that like, this is what I wanted to do and I got around the, the guys that played basketball, everybody that was into it and I was like, for two, three years, I was like really putting in a lot of work, mm -hmm. working really hard and every chance I get, you want to play, you want to work out, you want to do this, I'm there mm -hmm. and it wasn't easy but I stick with it and I saw how how good I got at, in the little space of time. So I know if under the right guidance and training, I, I can be a really good player. Mm -hmm. And those two, three years were here in the BBA? Yes. And to speak about some of the areas, some of the communities you would have played and some of the persons you would have came into contact with too. I, I heard you, I think you mentioned Ray, I'm assuming you mean Ray Victor as well? Yes, I, I, we, I traveled my first time with Ray Victor. Uh, it was Dion, Nigel. And I can't remember who, but we, when I got that experience to go over there, I came back and I was like training with Marsh and then uh, Bash, Yellow, and it was just a whole group, everybody that was in that, that field of basketball, that like, loved the sport. Bim, everybody had something good, like, I was always like a sponge, taking in all the, the gems I got, watching them play and see where I can get myself better, and just being a student to the game. Mm -hmm. And once, once I was a student of the game, nobody was afraid of, everybody was like wanting to give me their piece of how they see the game and what I can do better. And I just took it all in. Gola, everybody that has something to do with the game here now has taught me something in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. And did you manage to play any local competitions prior to leaving or all of the competitive nature of it would have came uh, subsequently? Yes, I, I, I played in, in the, uh, the local leagues and then I got to represent the um, BBI national team in um, Bahamas and right here in town. So those two was really good. Well, when I went to, uh, I actually started in um, college mm -hmm. and then I came back and represented the BBI. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a really good experience for me from playing in college to playing internationally where to get a, a, a good taste of the professional basketball. And so from college to 
taking a summer to play professionally in overseas with all the top talents from different countries gave me confidence to go back to college like okay I played against this kind of competition and so this this competition I'm about to face now which it shouldn't be my mindset was like yeah I'm past that I know who I can really compete against so it's like do what I got to do and I can get back there mm -hmm. so let's fast forward back to Holland you said Holland was your first um, year professionally uh, I'm not sure if that would have been 2017 uh, I did a little 2018, research. 2018. 2018. Okay, because I think you, you would have entered for draft qualifications in 2017. Mm -hmm. And I guess that would have happened the following year subsequently. Right. So speak about, you know, that journey, your first year playing professionally in a foreign a foreign country. I think they, they speak a foreign language Dutch. as well, too. Dutch. So they speak Dutch. Uh, how was it in terms of adjusting, you know, a little boy from the Virgin Islands? Um, you know, obviously living uh, most of your senior life in the United States and then obviously uh, migrating to, to Holland to, to play professionally. Speak about that. Uh, well, the transition was, it was different, but something that I got used to really fast because I guess since I left home from such a young age, just transitioning to the new places was always nothing new or foreign to me. It was always something that, okay, you're here now, get adjusted, get comfortable, and do what you came here to do and make it happen. And the transition was, it was a little difficult at times in terms of speaking another language, having no idea what was, was being spoken and trying to communicate with people, it was always difficult. And it was always good to find somebody that spoke English that can translate for you. Yeah. And they have, you have, uh, people on the team that does that for you, but it's not all the time you're gonna be with them. You're gonna have to go to the store by yourself. You're gonna go out and try to do different things. And mm. just having, just being able to communicate, that's the big part. And once you can have that, establish that communication, it's an easier experience, a better experience. Mm. And did you by chance had have, have to learn any Dutch, um, obviously while being there, was it? It, was that part of the requirement? Because I know, for example, in some um, some basketball teams, sometimes they will have like a special part of training mm -hmm. where you well, have that educational aspect of it to teach you a little body language. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, with this team, they had, I guess, they had different players or they would have um, coaches, assistant coaches that can speak the language. So they would um, be, the, be the interpreter in, um, in practices and stuff. And, Basketball is a universal language, so you just, you mostly learn with your eyes and see what's going on, and then when they try to communicate, you grasp it better and it's because you see what's going on, and it's, the communication gets easy. Mm. And from, um, speak about, obviously, year one, 2018, you were in Holland playing basketball. How did that went for your first time, you know, playing professional basketball in terms of performance? Well, it was a great experience. My, uh, actually, my first, my first game, I got injured. Yeah. It, was, it scared me because normally me hearing these different stories of going overseas, it was like, okay, you're going overseas, you do your job. If you didn't do your job, they get rid of you. You get hurt, they bring in somebody else to replace you. So the first game, I, really, I was playing really good and then I fell and uh, I tear some muscle in my elbow and I was out for about two months and it was a lot of up and down. It played really with my mental because I was all the time I'm thinking like, is they gonna get rid of me? Is they gonna bring somebody else in? And, but at one point it, the coaches saw me like really stressing and trying to like figure out like what's going on. But then he pulled me to the side and he's like, don't worry about anything. Like you're good. Just focus on getting back healthy because we know the kind of player you is and it's going to be beneficial to have you back on the team. So relax, focus on getting healthy and have no worries. And have no worries. And after he told me that, I, I was able to take a breath and just focus on my, uh, my return to the game. And then once I returned, I had a really good season. Mm -hmm. How long did you spend over there in Holland? Uh, nine months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine months. And then from Holland, um, where was your next uh, destination professionally? My next destination was uh, Pro B France. Mm -hmm. That was uh, 
a higher league, I can say. Mm -hmm. A lot of tougher competition. But I got adjusted and I kept it rolling. And when I really start, started doing my thing, I got injured. I, tore, I had a list fracture in my foot. And I was out for about two years, almost two years based on a, a, a wrong diagnosis where they said I had one thing and then I was trying to uh, rehab for that one thing and then it was not that. Mm -hmm. So when I, uh, I left the States, I left uh, France in um, June to go back to the States and then went back to my, um, my college, Rider University and have them look at the x-rays and stuff and they saw that there was an issue and that I needed surgery right away. So when they saw that, they said I needed surgery, I did the surgery and then that's when it, I, re, I started to have some good progression in terms of returning back to the court. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, France, uh, Dutch France, you would have also mentioned Iran as well. Mm -hmm. um, speak about yes, that too. that was my uh, return back to basketball. Uh, I got the opportunity to go out to uh, Iran but it wasn't too, it wasn't long. I was there for a month. Mm -hmm. It wasn't... How was that experience? Obviously, you know, people in this part of the region, when we hear Iran, you know, ordinarily, we naturally sometimes think about, you know, the wars going on, you know, the instability um, politically, etc. How was your experience in Iran? Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was different and Everybody was always asking about the different who I like, whether it was Trump or Biden and that mm. stuff because the whole political, yeah. And they was, I was never one to get into it. I said, it doesn't, I don't have no parts in it. It don't, I always decision. try to like bring that conversation up. Yeah. They're really, really good people out there and they're nice and like they welcome in and treat you nicely and well some people there's always those that group that yes try to exploit or try to do something but majority of the time it was always nice people and just being out there is, is it was a it was a good experience mm -hmm. in one way and a, it was a bad experience in the other way but mm -hmm. i enjoyed the experience overall okay um so oh, you would have touched dutch french iran um, I want to turn to Mrs. Carey, um, you know, you would have said you're retired now, but I'm sure you would have had a journey of your own too, professionally, um, in different leagues. So just speak about a little bit of your, um, different leagues you would have touched on some of your experience as well too, um, playing professionally. Yes, definitely. So I started my journey in Luxembourg. Um, I was coming back from an injury. I actually had the same injury as Norville, my senior year of college, the Liz Frank. Um, so coming back, I had a chip on my shoulder. I knew that I had to be better. I had to prove a point. Um, so I came in, I played really well. I averaged 26 points and six rebounds, I think it was. Um, from there, I traveled to Czech Republic. And I only stayed there for three months, uh, but it was a great experience, I can say. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I went to Australia, which I, loved it was amazing um i spent four months there and uh, from there i took a break because my mom passed away so i took some time away from basketball and i resumed and i went to morocco mm -hmm. and that was a great experience um i stayed there for five months and i made a lot of long-term friendships there. So it was a really dope experience. Uh, the basketball wasn't as high of a level that I was used to as far as college and then experience in Australia and Czech Republic. Um, but it was a really dope experience. That was the best place I played, um, Morocco and Australia. Mm. Okay, great. Uh, you would have touched a number of places, a number of areas too. Um, I want to speak to some of the challenges. I know you guys would have spoken about injuries. We don't know also too many professional basketball is a 
dog eat dog world, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, where, as you would have mentioned, during your first injury, your thoughts was, you know, I'm injured now, I would have been hearing the talks, if I don't perform, you're easily replaced. Speak about some of the challenges and difficulties in this uh, pursuit of a professional basketball career that you guys would have faced. Uh, I guess, I, go ahead. I would say there's a lot of adversity when it comes to basketball. Uh, whether it could be fans, teammates, um, your family and friends, coaching. So there's a lot of adversity. You really just have to um, have that tunnel vision and believe in yourself and know that everything that you have set out to do, all of your um, goals that you have for yourself, they're attainable. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Darwin? And I will say to... Um there's a lot of different, a lot of difficulties in terms of, like you said, who you're associating with, friends, family, basketball agents, mm -hmm. anybody having any different kind of conversation with you about basketball can mm -hmm. steer you in the right or wrong direction. So it's always good to like have a, a mind of your own and confidence in yourself to believe that, okay, you know what you want to do and you just having those confidence going put you in the right places with the right people that wants to help you because if you're not with the right agent, the right trainer, mm -hmm. they can say you need to be doing this and then you get with this train, this agent, you need to go to this team and then you get there. It's, you notice that, that this team is for the agent and it's not for me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So it's always good to have a guess, talk to people that's, Plain or that you know that's playing longer than you to get some kind of advice or guidance mm -hmm. and just to always have that mind of, mind of your own in terms of knowing what you want and where you're trying to go and go about it as such. Mm -hmm. I'm sure one of the major challenges as, as well to couple, um, to add to what you would have mentioned just now too, is injuries. And they say that obviously as a fan of basketball when we see you know, sometimes our favorite stars, uh, star player getting hurt, you know, sometimes you hear they're out for two, two years, they're out for a month, they're out for several months, whatever the case is. Um, the, the road to recovery, I'm sure that is one of, the, one of the major challenges, you know, especially mentally. Speak about that as well as a professional. This is my second trip in terms of uh, recovering because I'm right now recovering from an ACL injury and... They happen uh, back to back, actually. My, my um, second year after my um, Liz Frank, I started playing. I got through, uh, well, one season, and then the next season, I was, this past season, uh, I, I got injured again. But the, with the first injury, that one really scared me a lot because it, it played a lot with my mental in terms of not being sure if I'll be able to play basketball again because of the, what I went through in terms of the wrong diagnosis and then having screws in my foot, being playing with screws in my foot for a season. Not saying like with the pain, actually concerning like if I have to play with these in my foot, I probably won't be playing anymore. To taking out the uh, screws and not being, the season is over with taking out the screws and not sure if like where you're gonna play again so it's like with me my thing was okay because i was injured for so long i'm trying to find the next contract and do that as soon as possible secure that so i know okay i can just work on getting my body and getting back right and which i can say it in overall was a good decision but i can say in the beginning it was more about like i should have been a little more patient mm -hmm. in making my choice but i played through that last season and i really really uh i guess came into my own in terms of a, a, a professional player um, in terms of knowing okay i'm not in a rush to do anything i let the game come to me I, I saw the maturity in the, how, and how I matured in the game. And I got, I got injured and I, this time it wasn't as stressful because I know, okay, once I focus on the right rehabilitation, 
everything will be just fine. And right now, I've been working on that. And in, it hasn't been as the, the, the best process, but it's, it's going in the right direction. So I just know I just got to keep pushing forward. And because I know I did so well in my previous season, I'm confident to know that when I return, I shouldn't have a problem getting a contract. Mm. And also, before I move on to my other topic, speak about some of the highs. Obviously, you, you touched on some of the lows. Uh, I believe it was last season uh, you would have won uh, one of the, I think, the, the league back then as well. So speak mm -hmm. about the highs. We can't just address all of the challenges and stuff. Speak about some of the highs. Well, this well this past season, like we won the, uh, the championship to move our team up to the, the, the next division. And that was a really... Great experience. So that's something I wanted to accomplish mm -hmm. in terms of being a professional basketball player, having a championship to my name. And because of how it went, it everything went not according to plan from the beginning. So mm -hmm. because how it ended up as us being championship, that one meant that one was special. Mm -hmm. And because my impact Based on my impact, I felt that one. I feel it a lot because I had a lot of, um, I had some major impact in terms of helping my team. Mm -hmm. And when I got injured, the, the, the position they was in after my injuries was like, they, everything was possible. At first it was how it was looking. It was like, we don't have a chance of winning anything. But then by the time it got to the playoffs, it was like, it's all up in the air. And then, they played their game and won the championship. Mm -hmm. I speak about the position you play. Can so. I just say, and he also went away with the MVP of the championship. So he's being modest. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's brushing the off as though, you know, well, you know, we, but you were the best player this season. So speak about your performance. Speak about the position you play as well for those wondering what position you play in basketball. I play the small forward and power forward. Uh, the four position, the five position. And I would eventually like to get to the three position because I can do a little bit of everything and based on my uh, my athleticism and my quickness and my strength I can do different things and that allows me to be on the court for a long ex extended period of time as long as I stay out of foul trouble which in the beginning of the season I had some difficulties with but I saw my role like how important it is like okay certain things you're gonna have to give up and not be worried about because you have to stay on the court. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that. And once I learned that, I, different things, the game became more easy because I wasn't as, it was, I didn't let a lot of things bother me. Mm -hmm. I speak about your average, for, especially for that particular season. I average uh, 15 points and five or six rebounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And, and let's move on now to, in terms of advice, you know, we would have spoken about the trials and tribulations as well as some of the goods as well. Um, what advice would you give uh, some of the youth uh, that are interested in following a similar co career path? I'll start with your wife first because, you know, obviously, we just, um, she's in a unique position, you know, with female basketball, you know, getting a lot of limelight, a lot of attention now these days uh, with uh, the conversation going towards of increasing the pay of, of professional, female professional uh, basketball players. So speak about, you know, some of the advice you would share to those females who are interested in pursuing a similar uh, career path. Yeah, definitely. Go after your dreams. And when you face adversity, use that adversity as fuel to take action. Because when you take action, when you take the proper action, you'll get the results that you want. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Narville, in terms of those guys here? Um, interested in pursuing a, a basketball career. We do know there's um, a, a few young talents from the Virgin Islands right now that are doing real good. Demoy Hodge is one of them. I'm not sure if you're aware of Demoy. Yes, um, so sure, Speak sure. about some of the advice you would give. I can say, uh, put in the work. Mm -hmm. It may look all good just to be on the TV or go out, say it here, oh, I went away because I get the chance to go away, but put in the work work hard and try to do a lot of extra work in terms of say you're working with a, t with a team with individuals if you can do stuff on your own put in a lot of work and it's not always going to be about basketball it's going to have to be uh, you have to do your school work as well and 
the more you, you could focus on school and make it easier for yourself, and that will be more time for basketball. And once those two are, there's balance in both of them, sky's the limit. And not just saying when you get old, get a chance to go in the States, it's like, okay, I'm here now, get comfortable. Work even harder. There's going to be different ways, more opportunities to get exposure. And that was a thing I can say that I wish I had more of ex exposure when I went to the States. It's okay, I played for a school. Yes, I was doing good. But because I went to the different uh, hoop, hoop camps, different basketball camps, I got more exposure from different uh, colleges and when uh, playing with just the, um, your school team, you get, you, if your school team is not that good, you're not going to have scouts coming in to look at you. But if you get to these uh, big different camps, you're going to have tons and tons of schools here to look at you. So it's always good to get in as much camps apart from your schooling, apart from the team basketball that you're playing, to get into different camps so you can have your, your own in individuality in terms of being your own player. And not, oh, I know this kid from this school, but he comes to this camp, this camp. Everybody knows him from here, from there. And the more exposure you have is the more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay, some really, really great advice. Um, and let's speak about, let's turn the, the, the needle now in terms of what you guys have been up to in terms of vacationing so far in the BVI. I would have seen you doing a number of motivational speeches across some, uh, at least one school in particular. So speak about what you guys have been up to while here in the territory? Well, the, I just wanted to bring her here for the first time and be back home for the first in a long time and just see how it goes. And then the opportunity came up where we was asked to do it. And it's in our field of familiar, familiarity in terms of being basketball players, you're gonna have to do different functions in just basketball. You have to go to different schools and speak to the kids. and. It was a good experience for me because I was able to do that home and they were speaking English because overseas they don't speak English. So it's hard to communicate, but the communication here was really good and refreshing. And yeah, and just being back, being home and just having a feel of things is because it's been a long time. A lot of things is new to me. A lot of people is unrecognizable. It's like, it's all new, and but it's refreshing and put me in a mindset to, to come back more and try to see where I can be of, I can implement myself in terms of doing different things mm -hmm. like basketball camps or going to other schools, having different talks and just see, seeing how I can be of benefit and give back. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And what about you, Robin? Um, this is your first time in the Virgin Islands. How have you been enjoying the beautiful British Virgin Islands? It's been lovely. I've, I've definitely been enjoying myself. Um, since I've been here, <laughs> I'm already planning the next time we're coming back. Like. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. And what is the best thing you've done so far, the best sighting you would have seen so far? Actually, it was yesterday at King Garden Bay. Mm -hmm. We went jet skiing, and I enjoyed the, the beach atmosphere. It was really dope, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> Definitely 20, plans for 2023, I assume. To do a lot more. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in terms of some, uh, talking about plans, I want to turn to plans and goals in the not-too-distant future when it comes to um, career-wise. I know you obviously say you are recovering right now. You know, what are the plans going forward, you know, post uh, recovery? Well, after recovery, I will just let my agent know, okay, I'm ready. And when that, that process begins, it's just getting my name out there. And I know there's going to be uh, t different teams that's going to be interested. So it's going to be uh, just picking out which is going to be the best contract or which is going to put me in the best possible position to take my, my career even further. So just having that process of pick, picking, picking the right team. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I was a little quick on making that decision, but I'm gonna take my time and really make a wise choice because I know I'm confident in myself because I know what I can do when I'm healthy and I'm on the court. 
So it's not like I'm being a, have any pressure in terms of, okay, I got to go prove myself. It's like, okay, if you want me, I know what I can do. I'm going to go and do my job. So it's just basically the focus is just getting back healthy right at the moment. Okay, great. And you mentioned it's, it's about picking the team, but also picking the location too. Yes, <laughs> which definitely. Is good, which is a good point. And what about you, Robin, as well? You know, obviously you're, 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 you're retired, but I was told you're a model as well. Uh, what about you professionally? Any, uh, any intended plans for the not too distant future as well? Yes, definitely. Right now I'm in a space of growth. Um, I've really been working on my personal uh, self-development, uh, self-love, being able to figure out myself, travel the world, figure out things that we're interested in, and um, things that we want to invest in, things that we see ourselves doing in the future. So, yeah, I've really just been engulfing myself in being a better person. Okay, great. That's actually it's, uh, one of the best things you can ever do, invest in yourself and, and work on self-development. So, uh, any, any final words you, know, you guys would like to leave for our viewing public? Um, well, I can say, yeah, be a better person, be a good person, because I definitely feel like that will put you in a lot of rooms um, and put you in a lot of situations um, that can make you grow as a person. Um, like they say, they always say, be a good teammate. When you're a good teammate, you know, people want to pass you the ball, the coach want to call your name and, and different things like that. So just allowing that to roll over into real life and how you deal with people and, and just realizing that everybody is human. Mm. We all have room for growth. Mm. Any last words for yourself? Well, thanks for having us. And it was a <laughs> great opportunity mm. in terms of being in front of the camera, having stuff to say. We kind of actually want to go further in that kind of feeling in terms of being in front of the camera, speaking our, our minds and being an impact in that way and just like anybody out there watching if you got goals plans pursue it don't the battle starts within the mind because you can be fighting oh i don't want to do this this might happen this might not that might might not happen mm -hmm. but you won't know until you try to do it or pursue it and then when you actually start doing it it's like okay this wasn't as difficult it was always in my head and that's what I'm learning to do as well. In terms of speaking, mm -hmm. I always get nervous, and but it's no, just have proper, a proper conversation, speak your mind, and have no fear. Okay, well, great. Well, I want to thank you both for um, joining me here today. As I would have said initially, you know, thank you for your time. Thank you for the wealth of knowledge you would have um, obviously shared. Uh, with our viewing audience, obviously, about the different um, ups and downs about basketball, you know, and the different ways of trying to overcome such challenges as well. So I really appreciate your time, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carey. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Well, viewers, until next time, I'm Kamal Haynes. Hope you enjoy the content. Bye-bye. <laughs>